This is important right now because you hear this taught a lot. It's taught across colleges. It's taught on campus. Uh, and it's taught in the media. It's taught in the entertainment industry. Today, whenever we're talking about the unspeakable acts committed in the name of Islam across the world in record numbers, what is it that we're inevitably told? But, but the Crusades. All right, don't ever use that voice again. But the Crusades. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's so commonly used. Here's a montage. Remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. Why are only Muslims mentioned in talks about religious extremism? Did y'all forget about the KKK, Westboro Baptist Church, Crusades? We all have the bad seeds in the family. Why the Muslims didn't go up from Jerusalem and march up to Europe to attack Christendom. No, the Christians marched down to Jerusalem to attack the Muslims. The Crusades and the Inquisition. He went to the big ones, the ones where it's like everybody agrees. Woo, that was f***ed up, wasn't it? And a lot of you probably believe that too, so it is time to get your paper plates, knife, and fork ready because we're about to have a sacred cow cook out. It's a nice little graphic there. Mm, well sure to get us some letters. So let's get through these, th these myths. There's, if you've been taught about the Crusades, I'll call them the Second Crusades. The retaliatory crusades, I'll explain in a minute because it's important, that they were unprovoked. That it was just Christians running across the globe uh, with pointy hats and swords, killing any and all Muslims they could find, innocent or not, simply because they didn't like their brownness. It couldn't be further from the truth. Now, it's important because this is taught in schools across the country. A lot of people believe this. The fact is that these crusades, the second crusades, they were a response so the first crusades from Islam, from the Muslim onslaught, for hundreds of years, for over 400 years, there was consistent Muslim expansion, aggression, violence. Muslims took Jerusalem in 638 AD. Uh, they pillaged Rome in 846 AD. Christian Spain and Portugal in 711 AD. Sounds like a gas station, but it's historical context that you need to know. That's why you tune in. Southern Italy during the 9th century. Uh, the Ottoman Turks were advancing into to Europe and invading the Byzantine. Empire. Uh, in, uh, I think I think it was 10, 1050, 1060 something AD. The Turks were marching into Asia, Syria, um, and then the big one, the big reason. So if you look at this map and you can see it expanding, was fourteen fifty three, the capture, the sacking of Constantinople, which basically put an end to the Christian Byzantine Empire. And um, here's the thing. I understand military expansion, okay? So I'm not going to condemn the Islamic uh, world for doing this back then, okay? Now, right away, that should change the context to the Crusades because people war and people go back and gain territory and win. But the sheer brutality from Islam, for example, they, 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 they deliberately desecrated the burial sites of Peter and Paul Dick move. in 846. Exactly. Say. These are military terms you need not concern yes. yourself with. They would behead people, as we see today. They had methods of torture that were incredibly brutal. The dimitude, meaning they, were put, they would force non-Muslims to be subservient and pay taxes, and they didn't get to enjoy the same kind of rights as Muslims got to, to enjoy. Something we don't mention amongst our white guilt, millions, millions, some people estimate higher than 100 million died under the Arab slave trade. We have courses that we're forced to take here in the United States to learn about the evils of slavery that we stopped. Oh, are they teaching those? Anywhere across the Islamic world? Is there, is there Islamic guilt? Is checking your Islamic privilege a thing? So this kind of brutality, this kind of inhumane treatment, and yes, m military expansion and cultural expansion is what led to the retaliatory crusades. People like Vlad the Impaler, you've probably heard of... You, do you know Vlad the Impaler? Uh, commonly known as Dracula, I believe. Dracula right. is how he's yeah. known. Yeah. Vlad the Impaler was an actual person. Some sucked. Little bit of a sadist. I'll give that to you. Vlad the Impaler became really brutal precisely because he was a prisoner and saw the inhumane treatment, saw the brutality from the Islamic Empire. That's why he's seen as a folk hero to some. Now, I would say he went a little too far the other direction with impaling people and allegedly drinking blood. He found the line. He found the line, but... It's good for him. He found it. You find it, and then you dance back. That's but what you have to do. they heard the message loud and clear. It's true. He was one of the few people who fought them off. He was using Verizon back then while everyone else was on Sprint. Mm. They got the message. He was ahead of their of they were, Vlad incurred like no roaming charges. Like that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so all of this is what led to the Pope putting forward the idea of a Christian crusade for, for the first time that kind of gave license to uh, killing people who weren't Christians because they were facing the extinction, potentially, what they thought of their culture, of their way of life, to who they saw to be barbarians at that point. And it's important to remember that the crusades, the retaliatory crusades from the Christians at that time, met the criteria of the just war clause. They were thought of as an act of love in response to Muslim aggression. Historically, they met the criteria that was necessary. So, that's a big myth that we know. Another one that, that we hear a lot, and that, that context matters, is that the Crusades are uh, some sort of a source of modern Muslim aggression or angst toward the West. Um, there are terms out there, often parroted by, of course, the Young Turks, Reza Aslan. Um, you've probably, did any of you learn this in college where they talked about when Christians took Jerusalem in 1099? I should say, took back Jerusalem. Yeah. Which is really what they wanted to do. They'll teach you, when Christians took Jerusalem in 1099, no, when they took back Jerusalem. Kind of like when people talk about the war of, of 67 when Israel gained territory, they don't talk about how many countries, was it Egypt, Jordan, uh, I, I'm going to remember the third one, were saying, teaming up to eviscerate them, and Israel just happened to kick their asses and took their land for protection. It's, it's left out. So when Christians took back uh, in 1099, you've heard this term, right, that the, the, their, their siege of Jerusalem, uh, blood, they had blood up to their knees. You, you might have heard it. It's a term thrown yeah. around a lot. Even so much so that Bill Clinton said this after 9-11, mind you, the context matters. In trying to be sympathetic and show his tolerance and how progressive he was to the terrorists and terrorist supporters across the Islamic world, Bill Clinton had this to say, those of us who come from various European lineages. Can you do it in Bill Clinton? Yeah, try that are not blameless. Indeed, in the first crusade, when the Christian soldiers took Jerusalem, they first buried a synagogue no, with 300 Jews in it. I was going to say that's, yeah, that's unnecessarily dark no. to do it in a Bill Clinton voice. And proceeded to kill uh, Muslim women, Muslim children uh, at the Temple Mount. I want to get down to the part where he said, the description of the event describes soldiers walking on the Temple Mount, a holy place to Christians, with blood running up to their knees. The common term, he reiterated it. I can tell you that that story is still being told today in the Middle East, and we are still paying for it, right after 9-11. First off, uh, that's physically impossible for blood to be up to your knees, uh, of course. And they, by the way, it may sound like we're trying to take something literally that they meant figuratively. No, 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 no. They, they will teach this in college literally, and Bill Clinton meant it literally. Steve Weidenkopf pointed out that this is not only a, physically in, in, uh, incapable, but um, corrected the record regarding the Jerusalem battle. Standard practice at the time dictated that a city that refused to surrender at the sight of a sieging army would suffer any and all consequences of a successful siege. This is why many cities back then agreed to terms before commencement of this siege. Um, it doesn't mean all Muslims did that. They didn't necessarily follow the rules of war, as we've seen now. They didn't really follow any civil rules of engagement. The point is, 11th century warfare was was harsh. This shouldn't be a surprise. Yes, the retaliatory Christian crusaders did kill many inhabitants, uh, but the events are not out of the ordinary. And um, modern accounts, like Bill Clinton, when they throw it out there, they're, they're used to stir up backlash against the West. They're the ones who are stirring the backlash up against us here in the Western world. They're the ones who are encouraged people in the Islamic world to use it as an excuse because the Crusades were largely forgotten and they weren't used as justification for ISIS, for Taliban, for take your pick for that rule of the day. And here's something I would like to, to put forward. You know what? Um, not only is it understandable now, given this context, uh, that the Crusades occurred, the Crusades were necessary. They had to happen. I'm not condoning the loss or, or, or the, the, the taking of innocent life deliberately, but the Crusades as a military and cultural response needed to happen because they happened precisely to stop the kind of barbaric behavior that you see in the Islamic world today. And you saw up until today in any other place where the Islamic empires were able to conquer. Let's talk about the Armenian Genocide. Where, where, where thousands upon thousands of people were killed brutally, including the crucifixion of young girls. Don't tell Cenk. I still don't know how Anna Kasparian sits mm. next to him. Let's just don't talk about it. It only gets him mad. 
Uh, in the 1800s, Sunni Muslims killed over 4,000 mostly civilians in the city of Shia beheading their king. They still behead in the Islamic world. You've seen these headlines. This still occurs all across the Islamic world. I'm not only talking about ISIS, but in places like Saudi Arabia. In some of these places in the Islamic world that actually have modern technology, you would consider them here in the New World, beheadings occur in soccer stadiums as a warm-up act. We get Beyonce's nipple, they get a head rolling around being kicked for a goal. I'm just saying that the reason the Crusades occurred were to stop the kind of behavior that shock you every single day when you read the news from the Islamic world. Because guess what? That was going to be the entire world. Even today, ISIS and their ilk are still forcing non-Muslims into dimitude with taxes and violations of basic human rights. And here's, here's the main point. Whenever religious Islam has been given the uh, opportunity to, to, to congregate, given a petri dish, um, in contrast to the rest of the modern world, to the rest of Western civilization, Europe, the United States, the Islamic world, when given the opportunity to civilize, when given more time, doesn't get better, doesn't make progress. It almost always gets worse. It gets worse. And that's what was happening before the Crusades because of the Islamic Crusades, and that would have occurred across the entire world. It's not one of those issues. Leftists like to act, sometimes they'll use this argument, right, that, well, Christians have come a long way if you go back to the Crusades. They were pretty uncivil, and uh, some members of Islam are just in that, it's like that phase for them where they need to get beyond it. No, Christians before the Crusades did become much more civilized, were advancing into the New World, then because of Islamic onslaught and behavior, they had to get down in the dirt, the Crusades occurred, and they continued to make progress. By contrast, anywhere in the Islamic world where what they expanded into with their Crusades has been allowed to continue, it has gotten worse and darker. And, and if you're a progressive and you feel the need to appease it... <laughs> If you like this video, subscribe by clicking the button that says subscribe. If you're not aware of it now, there's no way you're learning the internet at this point. I'm not going to help you. But this was clipped from my daily show, available exclusively to lotterwithcredit.com slash mugclub members. If you're a student, military, or veteran, enter in that promo code. It's less than $6 a month, and you get daily content. No more clips, plus this hand-etched mug. Oh, I just, when I feel it, I got a chill, like, on the inside.